Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are here to watch the install of the harmonic balancer on a Mustang V6, this is the 4.0 engine of course, um, you're in the right place. So um, I'm just going to show you a quick tour here of what I'm at and just make note that you don't have to tear down the engine or remove the radiator. I got the radiator complete all the way here. You don't have to do this. Um, I'm actually replacing the radiator and, and some other components here, so I just removed everything. It'll make it easier to video as well. So, <clears throat> basically what you got to do is uh, remove the, flat, the fan shroud. will give you per, uh, enough clearance to actually access the, the balancer itself. So, you can tell here I already got it set up. I have an old belt on here that I have strapped down with just some vice grips on both sides on both sides here just to hold it uh, just to get the uh, crank bolt out um, and also to install it to spec uh, one thing you want to pay attention to is here's the sensor here's your crank sensor right here so you gotta be careful with that because most of it is plastic and so if you hit it uh, you're gonna crack it you're gonna end up buying a new sensor so just be careful with that I'm gonna show you some of the tools here in a second on the bench uh, what we're going to use to uh, pull this balancer off. Alright, so if you're like me, you have a puller kit like this. Uh, we're going to use this uh, to pull off the balancer off the car. Um, the only problem with this is Ford actually recommends their own part, a uh, special part to actually remove it. Um, there's a big problem with that. And I'm going to show you here in a second if I can find what I do with it. Oh, So the crank bolt looks like this and so it's got a quite a big head on here and so what happens here is if I bring the balancer see if we get enough light so you can see it through here you can tell it's a very small hole to actually reach the crank itself so uh, typically on these sets here these puller sets you know this is your typical rod that pushes through and so what happens is you know that's not going to reach the crank but luckily they make these where you can actually pull these off and put different extensions on you know like different different types for this puller so thankfully they, they have that you can take that off so what we're going to use so I'm going to use an old quarter inch extension here that no longer is usable and uh, we're going to go ahead and fit it into this piece here and use it as our pusher onto the crank um, quarter inch is perfect because this part here actually fits perfectly into the hole and centers it perfectly in there so I think it'll, ha it'll be enough reach just to use this so we're going to be using this to help us push it off and so uh, I guess another thing too to keep in mind you notice that I showed you a bolt uh, this is a torque to yield bolt and so if you wanted to do it by spec uh, recommended by Ford is to replace this bolt uh, the only issue that I found uh, was trying to access this boat and actually get one. Um, I wasn't able to actually track one anywhere. Um, I actually had to get it from Ford, so keep that in mind. Here's the part number on it, if you're curious about it. Let's see if it focuses this. There we go. Right there, so that's the part number for Ford. It's like a $6 bolt, uh, just to torque it to spec. Um, the reason being is you know you're going to torque it to I think it's like 33 foot pounds and then after that you have to go a full 85 degrees uh, after that and that's where your torque to yield comes into play so the reason I'm doing it to spec is you don't know how many times this bolt has been in and out and not replaced and so I just wanted to play it safe because once I torque this down into the shaft or into the crankshaft and I go to torque to yield it you know you might bust this bolt into the the crankshaft and then you got a whole another problem on your hands so I might as well just replace it it's a six dollar piece um, make you feel better at the end of the day basically so uh, could you reuse it um, yeah I mean I'm sure you could I'm sure it's gonna hold um, I don't see why it wouldn't hold but you know why chance it and I'm not going to so uh, we'll get back over to the car now and we'll remove the uh, existing bolt and then uh, hook up uh, hook up this kit and pull off that balancer. Alright, to remove the crank bolt you can use a uh, 3 quarter inch socket 
or a 19 millimeter both of them will work um, you can use a pry bar or you can do what I'm going to do now is just use an impact gun real quick uh, pry bar works just as fine um, you know you just got to make sure everything is really really tight here uh, to hold everything into place and make sure that that crank doesn't move so this is the easier option of course All right, so before I install the new balancer on, uh, just keep a note that this goes on one way. It's actually keyed, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and grease out the, the outer and the inner just to help it uh, kind of glide onto the crankshaft. Um, also on the car, you wanna inspect your uh, front crank seal. Uh, make sure it's still in good shape. Um, it's not cracking all the good stuff because this would be a perfect time to actually change that out as well. So uh, keep that in mind. So I'm just going to put a little bit of grease around here. 
uh, kind of help keep the dirt away plus it's going to help slide this part on a little bit easier so uh, I like things being a little bit easier and that way too when it hits the seal it doesn't crack it or kind of rub it the wrong way if you know what I mean so doesn't have to be too much but I think that should do it uh, Ford also says you need a special installer to install this um, I don't think that's completely accurate I think we can install this just with the bolt uh, and maybe a, a little tap to kind of get it started so uh, we'll get over to the car and get this thing back on All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down to about 32, 33 foot pounds. Okay. Now I'm going to use a pry bar just to make this a little bit easier. Uh, we got to go ahead and turn this an additional 85 degrees. Now I don't, I'm going to use a pry bar so I don't have a fancy torque wrench to tell me what degrees this is going to be actually uh, tying down to. So another thing you can do, so which we're going to do here just to kind of show you. So I just made a little template, it's just 85 degrees. Uh, we're going to get it around that range or close to it. Um, I think if we're close, we're going to be good anyway. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball it here, basically. I'm going to line it up with my pry bar. And it kind of give me that range of what I'm getting at. If it's not dead on, I'm not worried about it. I do not think this bolt will come loose. So let's see if we can get there.
I think that's close enough to be honest with you. I'm probably didn't make it all the way to 85, but to me it feels like that bolt's gonna pop, so I'm not gonna push it. I know it's pretty tight. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. But it just kind of give you a cheap idea to actually uh, torque down your bolts. And now it's a matter of just uh, reinstalling your serpentine belt. Of course, this one I destroyed. Um, I always keep one out in the garage for these type of purposes. So it's always good just to keep one of these on the shelf. An old one, of course. Or put in the wall or whatever. So uh, they come in handy, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, so it's a matter of just putting the serpentine belt, belt back on and, and you're pretty much done with the job. Uh, for me, I got quite a bit to go. So, uh, anyway, I hope this, this helps you guys out. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you got any questions, leave them down below. And thanks for joining me on this one.